no one cooks the way we cook and no one has the bounty of raw ingredients that we have. So to live and cook here is not only an exceptional experience, but people worldwide know about it. As I look back on my youth, I realized the gift God gave the Falls family. I grew up learning how to fish, gather seafood, and cook every day of my life. Join me, Chef John Falls, as I cook up dishes honoring the age-old traditions of seafood and Louisiana's world-famous cuisine on hooks, flies, and alibis. Hooks, Lies, and Alibis is underwritten by Visit Baton Rouge, a longtime partner of this series and LPB. The capital city offers southern hospitality, cultural attractions, food, shopping, and fun. Information at visitbatonrouge.com. And by Audubon, Louisiana, working to conserve, restore, and protect important places for birds and people since 1924 and by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. We're here on Lake Desalman where catfish is the prize catch of the day. This 12,000 acre Lake of the Germans is just 25 miles west of New Orleans. It's named for the German settlers like my ancestors, the Falses, the Wagaspikes, and Zerangs who inhabited this region of the Mississippi Delta in the early 1700s. The lake is full of eating-sized catfish despite its average depth of only five feet. Fishermen use everything from slat traps and hoop nets to trot lines, can lines, and noodle jugs to catch fish. Now, now, gee, these uh, these hoop nets, is this a tradition in, in the lake? It is. These are used uh, mainly by the commercial fishermen. And, uh, you know, at certain times of the year when the fish are really running, these nets will fill uh, halfway up with catfish. Halfway up. Traditionally, hoops for hoop nets were made of white oak. Today, steel hoops are the most common and least expensive. Old timers would make the webbing for these nets out of cotton, the fiber of choice, and then dip it into tar. Today, they're made with nylon, which holds up much better. While there are plenty of catfish for the usual fishermen, Louisiana also ranks first in the country for commercial landings of wild-caught channel catfish. The commercial catfish industry is the livelihood of many Desalman families who have continued their catfish and heritage here for generations. In the mid-20th century, fishermen started suspending metal cans and barrels in this lake. Many people credit the bountiful harvest here in Lake Desalman to these barrels and cans, which not only provide a safe habitat, but a great breeding ground as well. Okay, Mr. Rodin, it looks like these little uh, 11, 12 inch catfish, this little blue channel cat is really, really fantastic eating, but is there a size limit that you can keep on the lake if you're fishing? Yeah, the size limit is 11 inches. If you're a sports fisherman, you can keep 25 under 11. If you're a commercial fisherman, you are allowed 10% uh, of your catch. Priest traveling with LaSalle in 1670 wrote that the fishing here is pretty good. We had only to throw a line in the water to catch 40 or 50 fish of a kind called here by boo, catfish. There's none like it in France. The majority of catfish sold in stores in the U.S. is farm-raised. Even Louisiana has close to 15,000 acres devoted to catfish farms, producing more than a million pounds annually. But when you can get wild-caught, tender, mild-flavored catfish right here in the center of the catfish capital of the world, why would you want to eat anything else? These catfish might not compete in size with the monster blue channel catfish harvested from the waters of the Mississippi, but who wants to clean a 100-pound catfish anyway? And while some argue that catfish has a muddy flavor depending on the water where it's fished, Mark Twain said it best. Catfish is a plenty good enough fish for anyone. And I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Oh. Ross's boat, huh? That's yours? Yeah. Why well, I like to cook like because I like to eat.
Okay, everybody jump down there, grab that net. Come on, grab it up, grab it, grab it. Pull it on up. All right. Ultimate authority, I'm going to say, on pan fishing in the lake. You know, y'all, I have to confess, I didn't get the genetic gene for catching fish that my brothers did. Even my nephew Jay is a great fisherman. Show him a lake and fish just start jumping in his nets. I can't figure that out. Well, Jay, you know, there's only one thing to do. Uh, Mr. Amadeus is uh, giving us a whole bunch of fish. You've uh, gotten some of that out of that wonderful old uh, hoop net. There's only one thing left to do, right? That's eat. That's to eat, exactly right. We have Eileen helping us out here, right? You ready? So anyway, y'all, we're using the little, what we call collarbone catfish. And Jay, we're on Lake Desalman, and you can hear way in the background that dredge. This lake is only four or five feet deep, so they're constantly dredging it so that boats can pass through it. And I think that's, that's been going on for, I don't know how many years out here. Every time you come, you can hear that old dredge going out here, right? So we have the little uh, collarbone catfish. Now that's those little bitty ones that's about that's about a foot long. Remember you said you had to throw some of them away. So we have to season this uh, fish fry. So Allie, you go ahead and open that up. I'll, I'll get this uh, going here. And uh, this is just a commercial fish fry. It's lightly seasoned already. And Jay, you can kind of season that a little more while I make my, uh, my egg wash uh, over here. I think, uh, I think the best thing about these little catfish uh, just how beautiful they cook up, nice and crispy, and of course we cut some little slits in it. One of the sweetest tasting catfish I've ever eaten comes out of uh, Lake Desalman. So I have two eggs here. How are y'all doing over there? Huh? Um, Allie, you doing all right? Huh? Jay, we were talking earlier about how important it is to continue the traditions with these young folks, you know, on, on the lake and knowing how to do all of this. And uh, with three children of your own, this is really something special that you do constantly, right? That's right. Not only the kitchen, but the cooking part as well. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly right. A little mustard. We always put a little citrus in that. The Germans love citrus and, of course, hot sauce as well. So we have egg. I'm going to put a little bit more milk in here. How are y'all doing on the fish? You're fine. Um, now, I'm using just a nice uh, vegetable oil here. I have a nice vegetable oil that I'm bringing up to about 375 degrees. And the reason I'm doing 375 is because I want to make sure that once I put the fish into the oil, that temperature is going to drop to about 325. So I want to get the fish into the bag. You ready for me, Jay? This is all seasoned nice. I'm going to go right into the bag. And Jay is going to shake this up just beautifully here. Go ahead and shake that up nicely. This is so easy to do. And what's traditional about it is you come out of the lake, bring the kids back to shore, you go ahead and skin the fish, get them ready for the pot, set up a nice outdoor scene like a picnic out here, and then into the hot pot. So our temperature, 360 degrees. We shook the fish in the bag nice. Look at that, see how beautiful that is. Into that hot oil. And I tell you, they're going to fish. I mean, it's almost like crackling, right? That's right. Uh, you want a nice, crispy, uh, any special seasoning you put on yours? I just had salt, pepper, uh, garlic, a little bit of uh, 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 mustard. It's hard to beat salt and black pepper. Just a simple salt and black pepper. <laughs> salt and black pepper, yellow cornmeal is good, yellow fish fry is good, or any commercial fish fries. You can see how this is just rolling over right here, just so beautiful, and believe me, when I tell you they're gonna cook fast, they're gonna cook exceptionally fast. And all I do when I serve this, a little ramelade sauce, one of the really nice historic fish sauces of Louisiana, and of course, our wonderful tartar sauce, and either one of those spiced up a little bit is just absolutely perfect with this. What else, what else would we serve? Hush puppies, French fries, onion rings, yeah. Oh my god, good crispy onion rings with a lot of great flavor in there as well. So, anyway, y'all, when I said a minute ago that these fry up crispy, I want you to take a look at just how they've only been in there a minute. Let me pull one, let me grab one if it'll, you're still swimming around in there. See if I can get. Look how crispy they're getting already with that beautiful yellow golden fry on them. I'm let them go just a little bit longer. And the reason I put the slits in it, that oil, hot oil, gets all the way down to the bone, right? And it just gets, now people eat the tail. Of course. They eat the fins. Well, it's my favorite part. It's almost like potato chips. That's right. Somebody, what about Allie and them? Do you like catfish? 
Right. You know, <laughs> we went fishing all morning long and you saying no, I know you like good catfish. Anyway, y'all, it's a tradition on the Lake of the Germans. Our ancestors arrived here in the early 1700s. In fact, this area was called Falses La Vache, the cow, Ari, the slaughterhouse. Falses La Vache, Ari was the first settlement in this area by the Webers, the Stives, the Steins, the Wagaspacks, the Zarangs, the Amadeus, all of these wonderful families that just made a tradition of fishing, cooking, and raising their families and passing down the generations all that they've learned on this beautiful Lake of the Germans. I tell you what, we're about ready, huh? You ready? Y'all, um, I tell you what, I don't know what you're gonna do, we're gonna eat. Look at that, huh? The first ingredient for any great cubion is always a great black pot. So y'all, we back on the dock here at uh, White Oak and we're talking about catfish, that simple little regional dish in just about every country of the world and everybody can catch it and eat it. And it's a big industry here, or at least was a really big industry here prior to aquaculture, right? Yeah, sure was. The wild caught catfish has a great reputation all across Louisiana. Well, well, as you know, we were in the Lake of the Germans, Lake Desalman today, and we were out there catching uh, fish in cans and everything else. And those little collarbone catfish are just really, mm. really unbelievable. The flavor of those are incredible. Now, when the Acadians arrived here, from Nova Scotia, Canada in, uh, um, in, in 1750, they were using those little smelt. They would fry the little smelt up there, those little fish, but they discovered the catfish here. Oh, heaven down here. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the cubillon becomes uh, a, a big dish of them. Cubillon, just a boil, that curd bouillon, you know, just boiling that bouillon, using a fish stock, basically, to create a really nice dish. Now, the, now later on, we added the dark brown root to it, but these guys were just using butter and flour. You ready to make some? Let's do it. Now, look, I'm putting butter. You see how hot that black iron pot is? This is gonna go fast, you know? So, see that? Look at that. And, uh, and Don, I'm gonna take all of the seasoning, because again, we have the Trinity here. We have our onions, our celery, our bell peppers, our garlic is added to it. So why don't we pick that up, and you can just put all of that down into my butter here. We'll just, you can just kind of move it down in there too, like that. And y'all, this is one of the classic dishes, because in Louisiana, we have so much rice too. So just about everything is gonna go over rice. That's good, you can put that right down there for me. And uh, I mean, look, take a look at this, mm. how nice that is. So we're gonna saute this around just for a second to wilt the vegetables. Now, Don, why don't you sprinkle some of the flour in? Now, again, we make the dark brown root equal parts of all the flour. You can put about half of that down in here. Just sprinkle it all, about half of it, maybe even a little more. Because we're gonna make just a little white root to thicken the stock. You can put a little bit more in there, it'll be good, yeah. Uh -huh. And then you see all of that nice seafood up there? See that? We have the shrimp. Now, now the good thing about the Acadians, when they got here, they found the beautiful uh, river shrimp, they found the lake shrimp, then of course the catfish. And they dice it like this to make a beautiful, beautiful dish. We're gonna put about half of it in the root. We're gonna sacrifice half of it to flavor and the rest we're gonna put in just right at the end. We're gonna move this around a little bit. Now you and I were talking about that cat, that, that the saltwater catfish which I, I don't, tell me the difference between saltwater and the freshwater catfish. Well, the saltwater catfish have a lot more poison in their fins and they're not as popular. They're edible, but nothing right. like a freshwater catfish. But they're pretty unique creatures. Though. But what about that head? We were talking about yeah. the crucifix and all that? Yeah, if you take the, the inside of a hardhead catfish and you let it dry out in the sun, right. actually you can see a crucifixion in there. And some people paint them and make them very attractive little gifts and souvenirs. I know a lot of times on the St. Joseph's altars of the Italians on St. Joseph's Day, they bring the, the skull of those saltwater catfish. On the back side, it looks like the Roman shield. Mm -hmm. And if you shake the skeleton, it kind of rattles inside like the throwing of the dice for, for, the, uh, uh, for the cloak of, the shot of Jesus. So anyway, a lot of great tradition here as well. So now you see all of this going in here like that? Joe, how about my tomatoes? I have some nice Rotel tomatoes, y'all. All of Yeah, all of it, every That's bit good. of it. That's the spicy tomatoes going in there. The kids just learn how to add spice to their dishes too. Now you can stir that and I'm gonna add a little bit of that fish stocking. We can just blend that in nicely like that. 
and it's gonna make just a beautiful dish. And then I can, uh, the, the, there's a lot of pepper in the tomatoes, so I'll just add a little uh, salt to it. I'll add just a little bit of my granulated garlic. You can keep just uh, uh, moving that around. And y'all, you can see how this is gonna be just beautiful. I'm gonna cook it for about, oh, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 minutes. Then we're gonna add all the rest of that seafood to it, but we've already have some right here. So you're ready to, you can move that platter out of the way for me. And I'm gonna take my, uh, come take a look at this. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look at that. All of the Unique catfish, the shrimp. Right like, see, color. see, it doesn't have as much of the flavor of the dark brown roux, mm. but look how beautiful that white meat of catfish is right there. And I'll just put a little touch of that parsley on top and even a little bit of this beautiful color as well. And I'll put that down. And y'all, that's that wonderful, wonderful catfish cubion of the Cajuns without the dark brown roux with the light roux. And when we come back, one more dish for you. So don't y'all dare go anywhere. How beautiful that is. Huh? Pretty pretty. I gotta, gotta clean up my mess. <laughs> Some people get so caught up in sticking to recipes. Why? Explore a little bit, add a little excitement to the pot. Why not add catfish to our traditional shrimp and grits? It'll only make it better, right? All right, Don, you can see that smoke in the skillet, so you know what that means, huh? It's cooking, time. cooking. <laughs> hey, y'all, Don Dubuque, outdoors with Don Dubuque in Louisiana, 25th anniversary this year. My God, you are such an icon on television, on radio. I mean, you have at least a couple couple television shows, radio, of course, you're the go-to guy, anything outdoor, right? I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we appreciate you so much, and you're always our go-to guy, too. I mean, when people are looking for uh, outdoor news in Louisiana, or seasonal news, or what's happening, whether it's hurricanes coming in and they need weather, tides, I, I know when I, I get a call from John Foles or Michelle, I know it's the tough questions. <laughs> I know it's coming. <laughs> so how's it been for you? I mean, it's I, been I, really good, I'm, really good. Just having a good time and keeping up with things and celebrating the 25th anniversary and enjoying working with people like yourself. Right. Now, how did you first get into uh, in, into radio? I couldn't do anything else. <laughs> Actually, it, it, he, 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 we could talk. <laughs> we promise you that. Uh, it was. It's kind of a. Uh, I'll try to make it a short story, but it's pretty unique. One day, I was driving by a radio station, right. a little country radio station. And something in my head said, "You know what? That station could probably use an outdoor show." <laughs> and something told me to pull in, and I introduced myself to the station manager, and he said, "Well, let me think about this, and I'll let you know." And three days later, the phone rang, and he gave me a 15-minute show <laughs> doing the prime time right after Swap Shop, which is oh, kind of like yeah, a trader. Yeah, sure, sure. He sell the feed. Pigs, right, 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 right. Yeah, and he put me on and went from there. Never so, looked back. So they went from, <laughs> went, went from, uh, they went from pigs to, to fish. To fishing. <laughs> anyway, y'all, we're talking about catfish today. This guy, hey, salt water, fresh water, a common fish to the big boys. He does them all. And you know, we we're talking about catfish, and 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 cat, everybody fishes, right? And catfish is one of those things that everybody can fish locally. Even you can have a little cane reed pole. You take it home, you eat it. And we know that for generations. In fact, that we were looking the other day in Zaire, ninety thousand years ago. There's evidence of catfish being used to spear uh, just a, that that nice bone on the top that nice point used to spear other fish and we also have evidence that uh, there's uh, about 20 fishermen during the during the times of the building of the great pyramids they were actually going out four times a month and bringing fish to the kings while they were watching the pyramids so catfish goes way back and we have some beautiful catfish right here just some really nice uh, uh, wonderful I'm just gonna put a little that seasoned flour and look you see how my uh, uh, my oil is is simmering here Huh? But see that smoke? I want a nice crusty edge on it because I'm elevating catfish from the frying pan into the saute pan. We want to get some really nice high-end uh, uh, flavor on this fish. Now I have one already done. I'll flip this over in a minute, but I'm going to take this one that's already done out. You see how pretty that is? See the color of that? I'm going to move it right here just for a second. And I'm gonna make a sauce. Let, give me all of that right there, Don. I'll just bring all of that to this pan here. I'll move it, I'll exchange these two pans. Right. Throw the shrimp in first, about half of them. 
you can slide them in about half of the shrimp. I'm gonna put about half of those mushrooms and you can go in with the uh, Creole tomatoes too. Dust those in as well. And the this is about as simple a classic sauce as you're gonna be able to get on the, uh, on the fish and a beautiful accompaniment to fish. You can just put that down behind you there. And give me that little sauce right there. That's a Worcestershire and a balsamic vinegar. You can go ahead and put that in there. And y'all, we're gonna reduce this sauce down and you can smell the citrus in there already coming out. And I have some of this already done too, so I'll move that out of the way. And let me show you what happens to this fish when we flip that, flip this thing over here. Come on fish, quit playing with me here. See, see the nice, nice rich. So it's not just little cubes of catfish deep fried in cornmeal. It's actually sauteed in a pan, keeping all those juices inside. You ready to uh, plate it up? Let's do it. Now let me show you what I'm doing here. Another, another good classic presentation. I have a little stone ground grits right there across the middle of the plate. Just beautiful. I'm gonna take this filet of fish that we just did here, right across the center of that grist. Now you hold that for a minute. And I have some of my sauce already reduced. So I'm gonna just kinda put it right on top. <laughs> oh, smell that? <laughs> oh, you're killing me. <laughs> That's called burying the fish right there. That's what we did, we just buried the fish in all of the sauce. You can put it down right here. I'm gonna put a little piece of uh, parsley right across the top. And the grits, look at this stone ground grits right out of the mill. Look how thick that grain is. Still has the oil of the corn in it. Really magnificent. That's gonna give that fish great flavor. Y'all, you don't wanna go anywhere because when we get back, another unbelievable dish using catfish. Elevating it, right? Look at that. Barracuda is what you drink if you get skunked when you're fishing. Of course, we rarely get skunked. That's why we drink it when we have a great day of fishing, too. All right, y'all, I'm pouring each one of you a barracuda here, and if this, uh, be careful, this thing will come back and bite. Uh, 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 Joe, come back and get you. Let's hope it doesn't have the big teeth like a barracuda. <laughs> Joe Macaluso, y'all, y'all remember him, and of course, Jessica, a librarian from a nearby parish. She heard about the barracuda, and here she is. Huh? Thank you so much. <laughs> nice to have you with us. Now, y'all, look what I brought here. to uh, Talk about uh, really getting catfish classy. That's a catfish terrine that's made with poaching of shrimp and catfish and then pureeing it with mayonnaise and sour cream and then molding it and serving it with crackers and it smokes. So it's got a really great smoked flavor to it. So anyway, all of these wonderful dishes, elevating catfish, y'all, to kind of a new level. And uh, Donna, I can't thank you enough. How's the barracuda, huh? Oh, well, we're gonna find out. Ah. Mm, bacaruda. Mm, good. <laughs> really good. Anyway, y'all, don't ever turn your back on catfish. I'm telling you that right now, oh, right, huh? Correct. Because it is a really great fish. And y'all, thanks for stopping by the camp today. And when it comes to fresh fish or seafood, there's no place like Louisiana Sportsman's Paradise. So see you next time for another tasty edition of Hooks, Flies, and Alibis. Hooks, Lies, and Alibis is underwritten by Visit Baton Rouge, a longtime partner of this series and LPB. The capital city offers southern hospitality, cultural attractions, food, shopping, and fun. Information at visitbatonrouge.com. And by Audubon, Louisiana, working to conserve, restore, and protect important places for birds and people since 1924 and by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. For a copy of John Folsa's cookbooks and more, call the number on your screen or visit www.lpb.org slash Fulse.